My name is Sebastian and in this video I'm going to show you how to migrate your Quarkus projects to Quarkus version 3 quite easily despite the changes that we have with Jakarta EE 10 and the namespace changes. So if we have a look at the Quarkus.io website we see that now Quarkus 3 has launched so yes congratulations that's great now we can use it but there's also a little bit of work that we need to do especially with regards to the namespace changes. You can for example have a look at this blog post and the announcement and well then some changes that I explained and while the obvious one that includes a little bit of work is the namespace change from Java X to Jakarta. Okay, so how does this look? Well, if I'm gonna take a project and I'm gonna take a fairly complex uh, project here that I usually uh, use for my testing purposes, that is a coffee testing project that includes some dependencies such as persistence, um, an external uh, system that is being used. I have some tests for that which for now just uses Quarkus 2, 2.9, and that we're gonna now migrate. So I didn't, um, well, prepare anything for that. We're just gonna try it out right away. Uh, what I have for now is the Quarkus, uh, Quarkus version 2, actually, 2.16. That's the latest one that I'm using here. And if we just would go quite naively and would update it to the latest Quarkus version, as of recording, that's uh, 3.0.1 final, and if I would go and now build the project here, if I go to my coffee shop project and say, for example, Maven Clean Build, then we're going to see that we have a lot of compilation errors. Why? Because now in the new dependency of Jakarta EE10, it doesn't find the symbol here of, well, all of these classes basically that are in the package. So the package is not known anymore because now the package changed. Now, what we would need to do, let's take just one example class here for the, let's say, Java classes here. Let's take any arbitrary resource that this doesn't work anymore. And as soon as we update also the Maven built here in my IDE, well, we get all these compilation errors. So this doesn't work, but luckily there is a tool to migrate all of these. So what you could do, while well, you could just um, manually go and rename all of these things. For example, you could search and replace for these occurrences and then rename it accordingly. This should work for most of them, but luckily we have a tool available in uh, the Quarkus, so that is shipped actually multiple ways to migrate with some migration uh, tooling here. So basically what you can do, there is some update tooling that is uh, built into the command line if you use the Quarkus command line tool um, that then you can use to update it. Or there are multiple ways you can also do this in, um, in the Maven plugin, which is the way I will do because uh, I usually don't use the Quarkus command line. And then basically what I do instead, I'm gonna use a Maven plugin. And if you refer it as such, you can just, well, refer it in this way. Quarkus Maven plugin update. And then you just say, well, to which, basically to which uh, base uh, version, to which stream, and then it will update that. In order to do this, I need to revert real quick the change here because otherwise it would, it would not do this work. So basically I still have the version 2.16 in my project and then I'm gonna go and execute this and then we'll see what happens. So basically it's gonna have a build here for which it's gonna rewrite uh, some code. And then after a few moments, we will see that well, what it uh, did do it will actually rewrite um, all of our uh, Java code, code that is based on Java X on these packages. And luckily we use Git. So of course we're gonna see all of these changes that now have been made. So first of all, the POM XML is, is changed and then all of these classes. If I do a quick Git diff, then we see all of these changes here. Okay, that's interesting. Mostly that's Java X to Jakarta. Okay, cool. Now that's already interesting and this was quite quick and helpful. So we have this command or of course you can invoke it from the Quarkus command line or you can use a Maven wrapper. There are multiple ways to achieve this, but basically we want to use this update tooling here. And then what do we do? Well, first of all, I would like to build it. I usually try to do this step by step. So now we could do a full build or what I do, I say Maven clean package and uh, dash D Maven test skip. What does that do? Um, in, uh, in comparison or well in, in 
opposition to um, test, uh, skip tests, this command also does not uh, compile all the tests. So sometimes this can be helpful. I just want to actually run everything here without the test compilation and without, so it won't uh, compile these here and uh, without running any tests. So the next step then would be to say, okay, skip tests, which will compile the tests but not execute them. Okay, this still works. So now the regular application build seems to work already. Okay, now let's go one step further. I now build my project and run all of the tests. Let's see what this does. And now we have a lot of failure here. Um, the failure with, it says, could not initialize plugin with Mokito error. And then here there is even some further issues. So what we're gonna do, and this, I would just uh, recommend is to update the versions. So luckily now, finally, these Maven Surefire and Maven Failsafe uh, plugins have shipped in version three, so I can update these. And then also I go through my test dependencies and update them. So basically the Quarkus dependencies, we see, well, the version is basically derived from my Quarkus version, but here these uh, versions are a little bit outdated. I could say, okay, uh, the of JUnit, JUnit 5, we update uh, to 5.9.3 for all of these dependencies. Okay, so that's that. SRJ and Mokito, I'm also gonna um, update here. That's this recent version. You can look uh, them up in, in Maven. So that's that. And 5.3.1 should be this version here. Okay, let's try this again. I'm gonna rebuild my Maven project and rerun all of the tests. Okay, great, this worked. So basically what I did do, I updated my dependencies, my test dependencies to the latest versions and then this matches here the version that is being used in Quarkus and now this seems to work. We also see that of course, now the latest Quarkus version has been used. So now all of my tests already work here. But that's not it. I really want to be sure that my application works as expected, also with the latest Quarkus version, because there might be some breaking change. I don't know. Let's try this. So what I have for now, this was only, uh, these were code level tests. But of course, I also have a proper system test project, because, well, here we're in the space of testing. So that is an example uh, project that you can try out yourself where I have um, system tests for. How I will do this, I will just um, run my scripts that are part of my project. So this basically builds uh, the project again, what we just did. And I also built a Docker image and then I can run these images. And basically this uh, project, because it's a little bit more of a complex real world kind of setup, um, it runs multiple containers, so it runs this application, but then also a database and a wire mock for that mocks an external system. So you can check out this um, project and some content that I have on it. But that's not that interesting for now. Where I can say, okay, please run the system test environment that basically what it does, it starts up my application and the external system that is required, the so-called barista as a watermark, and of course a database and it populates everything. And then if I go and say, okay, now I would like to go to my system test project, invoke may even verify, invoke all of the system integration tests that now actually connect to my system via HTTP. And as you can see, also run some uh, unit tests and all of that works. Okay, great. So now this looks pretty good. I just migrated my Quarkus version to Quarkus version three using this uh, plugin or using the update approach that comes with the tooling uh, with Quarkus. And this saves a lot of, uh, saves me a lot of time because then I don't have to do the namespace changes myself. Of course, bonus points if you have proper tests for that available because then you can really be sure that everything still works and then you can continue with the latest uh, Jakarta EE 10 dependencies and with Quarkus 3. If you found this helpful, I have a whole video course on the topic of uh, effective Quarkus development. You can check this out, link in the description. And I would also appreciate a like. And thanks a lot for watching. Bye.